I'm Mo. Ever since I started my channel, I wanted to do a series in this space called Five Blank Favorites. So I only did one episode of this series, and that was all the way back last November for Nonfiction November, almost a year ago, where I did five nonfiction favorites. This month, I've already done a recommendation for science fiction books. I recommended three science fiction books that I read in 2021 that I think would be perfect for you to read in science fiction September. But I also want to do a five science fiction favorites and recommend five more books that you could read anytime but would work for science fiction September as well. I haven't read Kurt Vonnegut's Cat's Cradle in a very long time and just researching it again for this video I think it's time for me to do a reread. This is a very short book. It follows an unnamed narrator as he travels to learn more about the creators of the atomic bomb. He travels to visit Oppenheimer's partner and and ends up becoming entangled in the partner's three children's lives. He finds out that they have a substance that their father created that could enhance or destroy the world. The rest of the novel is kind of a satirical look at religion, at responsibility, at love, at a post-apocalyptic future. It's definitely a little out there, but the book is really compelling to read. Cat's Cradle was written in the 60s. Like I said, it's very short. It has kind of some classic Kurt Vonnegut wisdom and wit. And I think this would be a great place to start with Kurt Vonnegut. It is very bleak, like many of his books, but it's not exactly about war. Um, so if you are trepidatious to jump in to Vonnegut, because a lot of his books do take place during wartime, this book is not exactly that. It's definitely a little bit of a bleak take on the possible future, but it is definitely worth the read. The oldest book on this list and one of my all-time favorite science fictions is The Island of Dr. Moreau by H.G. Wells. I also read this earlier this year again. This is a book that I love to reread. It's extremely short. It's very thrilling and engaging and I love to read this one if I'm feeling in a reading slump and I love to read this one when I want a dose of that really classic sci-fi. I've read other H.G. Wells books and I do enjoy them, but this one is by far my favorite. This is about a man who is lost at sea and just as he is about to lose hope and about to give up, he is rescued by a ship. On this ship there's a scientist traveling to an island to meet his mentor and a couple of strange things happen. When they reach the island, our main character is introduced to Dr. Moreau and he quickly realizes that this is a doctor who was kind of ostracized and expelled from the scientific world and now lives on a remote island where he does his experiments. His experimentation has to do with animals and with vivisection and splicing different animals, genes, and body parts together. Our main character very quickly becomes unsure and worried about the goings-on on this island, especially when he is locked in and not allowed to see what's going on. This book is an adventure. It's thrilling. It's exciting. It's ominous and suspenseful and it packs so much into such a short book that it's definitely worth a read. Its science is quite old but it is definitely science fiction in that the science that is happening on the island is really bizarre and interesting and how this science could change the trajectory of the world. If you haven't read The Island of Dr. Moreau, I think this is a great place to start with science fiction, especially classic sci-fi. Another classic sci-fi that I love and that I was read to as a child is A Princess of Mars by Edgar Rice Burroughs. Edgar Rice Burroughs is most known for the Tarzan series and creating the Tarzan character, which I think most people know a little bit about. A Princess of Mars is about John Carter, who is an explorer, and one night he 
is ambushed in a cave and suddenly everyone in the cave is made immobile as he's lying there wondering what's going on and what powerful forces could be at work he looks up into the sky sees the planet mars shining among the stars and is magically transported to mars there he has to come to grips with a different set of realities, he meets aliens, and he falls in love with the Princess of Mars. This book is, again, another older, really interesting book. It was written in the early 1900s, and it was serialized, so each chapter does have a little bit of repetition or a little bit of drawn-out suspense. But this one is so interesting, the way that it deals with otherness and aliens, with xenophobia, and with adapting to a new planet is really cool. There's a whole series of John Carter books uh, and they're definitely worth checking out if you haven't already. This is a modern classic for sure and it has some really great characters. Deja's Thoris, the Princess of Mars, is an extremely strong and interesting character as is Tars Tarkas who becomes John Carter's best friend and is a Martian. I would not suggest the adaptation of A Princess of Mars. It was called John Carter and it was awful. Another favorite sci-fi of mine is also a favorite of my husband's and that is Larry Niven's Ringworld. Now I recently saw Dane Cobain do a review of this and he rated it pretty low and I was surprised because I think this is a great modern classic sci-fi novel. This follows Louis Wu who is Feeling his age, he's quite old, but he has a lot of enhancements as most of the human race does now. So even though he's 102, I believe, he still feels like a man in his 40s. At his birthday party, he decides that he wants to prolong his birthday as long as possible, and he goes hopping on planet transporters to, to follow the sunset and make sure that his birthday doesn't end for a while. Then, when he's recruited to go on an exploratory mission, he takes it as possibly a good way to retain his youth, something new, something exciting. He's lived a long time, and he wants to keep up the momentum of his life, and he doesn't want it to lag. He's recruited into a crew of very interesting characters. There's a Kazin, which is a giant cat-like war creature. There is Tila, who has been engineered to have extreme luck. And there's Nessus, who is a puppeteer. The puppeteers are a mysterious and advanced race that mostly keep their distance from humans, so Louis Wu is really interested as to why Nessus wants to go on this mission. They take off in a ship and seek out the ring world. They go on many adventures and have many misadventures, and as they do, they learn a lot about each other, they learn about a lot about different species, and they learn a lot about the ring world. I really love this book. It's also a series, but I've never read any of the other books. This is to me, almost a perfect sci-fi in that the characters are really interesting. There's a lot of talk about war and warring creatures. There's a lot of talk about bravery. There's a lot of talk about pleasure and sexual experience as there are in many classic sci-fis. The ring world to me is pretty fascinating. Nessus is an incredibly interesting character because their species consider them quite mad for dealing with humans and going on a discovery mission of this type. This book is not long, it's super easy to get through, and I would highly recommend it as one of my favorite sci-fis. No Mad Cat sci-fi video would be complete without The Hitchhiker's Guide to the Galaxy. Yes, that's right, my all-time favorite book and my all-time favorite sci-fi book is a sci-fi comedy written in the 70s. We all know I have a slightly unhealthy relationship with Douglas Adams' work, but The Hitchhiker's Guide to the Galaxy is a great book if you are interested in comedy sci-fi. This is a silly British novel about a man whose house is going to be destroyed to make way for a bypass, and as he's trying to prevent that, one of his friends lets him know that he is not an Earthling, but actually an alien, and he is going to rescue our main character, Arthur, from the Earth, which is going to be destroyed to make way for a hyperspace bypass. 
They go on quite a lot of adventures together throughout this six book trilogy and we get to know many more characters like the ex-president of the galaxy Zaphod Beeblebrox who has two heads, Ford Prefect who is a sarcasm hating, party loving, all around fun guy. We meet Marvin, the perpetually depressed robot, and Eddie, the overly happy shipboard computer. This book, like I said, is part of a trilogy which has six parts. This book was made into a radio series, this book was made into a TV series, and this book was made into a movie. So if you are interested in reading this, I highly suggest reading it first and then exploring a lot of the other avenues that Hitchhiker and Guide of the Galaxy has gone down. I love this book because it's silly and funny, but at its core it's about people's relationships and how not all relationships are all good or all bad. I would definitely pick this up for Sci-Fi September if you haven't read it before, and it also works for Space Opera September. Although it is quite short, if you read all of the books it ends up being a very long book, which works for the longness of space operas, but also these books take place almost exclusively in space. Larry Niven's Ringworld could also be considered a space opera as this too takes place a lot in space. Those are five of my favorite sci-fi books. If you are a sci-fi reader and have not read any of these, I definitely highly recommend all five of these books. If you're new to sci-fi, I think probably the best book to start with is The Island of Dr. Moreau and Larry Niven's Ringworld. These both have concepts that are fairly easy to grasp, they don't have a lot of timely references, and they are a great way to break into sci-fi if it's something you're less familiar with. What is the next genre for five blank favorites that you'd like to see? I could do thriller, I could do mystery, I could do contemporary, I could do cozy mystery, I could do nonfiction again. Let me know in the comments below, and let me know what your all-time favorite sci-fi book is. And I'll see you in the next one. Thanks so much. Bye.